Hello everyone and welcome to Connecting with Others in a Diverse World, Freshman Seminar Presentation. This chapter is called Connecting with Others in a Diverse World and we're going to have a um, little bit on the first part of this presentation about connecting with others and then we'll get to the diverse world part later on. Some students see college as the place where they need to connect with others as really their major um, and they as really their major um, and they focus on that more than anything else. Uh, other students kind of swing back the other way and um, isolate themselves and are so serious with their studies or personality wise they struggle to make friends and they really don't connect with others very well and and some people even though they have active social lives don't really connect with others um, and then there are people in between but that's something that you should definitely focus on in college is learning to connect with others even as you're working hard on your studies you need to think about how you connect with other people um, and that can include friends, roommates, romantic relationships, your own family, and so on. Um, first, we're going to talk um, about some of the closer relationships. Uh, first of all, roommates, that can be really testy. I know as a student, um, I originally went to a college that had dorms, and I had way more roommates than anybody here does. They crammed a whole, uh, uh, sometimes six of us in a room smaller than the rooms that we have in the dorms here at Ancilla College. So believe me, I know all about the trials and tribulations of roommates. I could tell you stories for hours. Um, but keep in mind that roommates can get along. They don't need to be best buddies. They don't need to you know, be in each other's business all the time, but you can find ways to get along with people. Um, sometimes they'll be your good friends for life, and other times, okay, you had a year and you made it work and that's about it. And again, that's fine. It's key that you establish rights and responsibilities. And living with a roommate can be good practice for other things that you have to do in life and stand in life and standing up for yourself and asserting yourself, but also learning how to compromise. Um, again, the book has a bit more in the chapter about that, some good ideas. Um, as far as romantic relationships go, um, I encourage you to look up statistics about those who do get married in college and how well that works for them. Um, again, I uh, have known people and have had friends who um, get married and, and do that in college. Other people I've known that waited. Um, but as you start thinking about those things, again, talk with somebody who um, can give you some advice. Look up the statistics on how successful people are when they get married in college. Um, keep in mind there are some relationship no-nos. And uh, we've talked in other chapters about sexual assault and things like that. Um, you also want to keep in mind that there are people on campus that probably you should not get into romantic relationships with. Um, really, anywhere where there's a power structure that could be exploited. And sometimes that could mean the power structure where um, someone else would try to control you through a relationship or where perhaps a student would be trying to gain um, an advantage because of a relationship. Um, without getting too in-depth with that, um, keep in mind that sometimes there are legal issues that arise for both people and oftentimes these relationships don't wind up the way that people would want them. People often end up get very hurt um, getting into these rela relationships that uh, really have a power structure that isn't isn't going to work. Um, also, breaking up is part of life and again I'm not here to be a parent and counsel you on this but just a reminder that you need to be calm and respectful and be open to support. Um, sometimes two very nice people um, or pretty decent people get in a relationship and, and they have a breakup and especially on a smaller campus like Ancilla next thing you know um, there's huge drama going on whereas if they had just you know um, moved on not caused a lot of problems um, they would have been fine but other friendships end up being affected and other problems arise and they end up not being able to focus on their studies because they're so focused on the drama from a breakup so be calm, respectful, move on, and some students starting college already are in significant relationships. Maybe they're married. Uh, maybe they're not married, but they're in a significant partnership um, that's definitely over long term. Um, and some students begin college as parents or become parents during college. This can present some special challenges, um, especially in terms of connecting with other people. Um, maintaining a, a balance between family and academics. Um, how do you deal with childcare? Um, childcare can be really 
um, pricey for people and, and tough to afford. Um, and finances in general can be really rough for relationships. Um, most students uh, who are considered traditional age um, are involved with relationships with parents. And again, it's good to maintain that communication with them and be aware of what might be concerning them. Um, and talk to them about your experiences, even if they haven't had those experiences themselves. Um, being able to communicate with them is important. Many of us connect to others through our technology. And um, again, this is a whole subject that we could do lots and lots more presentations on. Um, but again, here are some good tips on here about online communication. Um, again, many students have already waded through, waded through landmines and had problems in high school with this and have hopefully learned about this in college. But I've personally been on discipline committees and, and been in other situations where people um, had a big beef going on online and things really dragged out and um, other people got involved, there were a lot of problems. Remember that oftentimes other people are going to see whatever you post or whatever you send an email or whatever you text. Don't text or email or post anything that you would be uncomfortable with the general public seeing because you don't have control with something after you send it or after you hit post. So um, there, are there are times where I will write emails where I say what I really think. I'll have a draft and then I'll have to go back and edit it. And that's a pretty good um, rule of thumb. Also make sure that you protect your identity, use good passwords, things like that. Um, and protect yourself, you know, don't set, set yourself up for whether it's catfishing or scams, things like that, um, or even some cyberbullying. Some of that gets really serious. So much of this chapter relates to diversity, and we're going to spend some time talking about different types of diversity and um, in some cases how to approach that. Um, keep in mind that um, there are lots of different types of diversity, and um, you'll encounter some or maybe uh, all of them here on the Ancilla College campus. But keep, in mind, but keep in mind that you're also going to encounter these as you get into the workplace, wherever you end up in the workplace. And some of us come from backgrounds where there's already a lot of diversity, and some of us really thrive on that. Some of us grew up in places where we wish we had more diversity. And some people grow up without a lot of diversity, and they really struggle on how to handle that. Um, so hopefully there's something in here that will help you. A um, couple of definitions on here, just moving forward. Um, ethnicity re relates to an identity of a specific group, and they're going to be connected by a national origin or language. You can see some examples there. When you hear the term race, that actually refers to biological characteristics such as skin tone, hair texture and color, facial features, things like that. Um, so um, sometimes we get those a little bit confused, um, but hopefully these definitions uh, give you a better sense of uh, what these things mean. Um, then there's the idea of a culture. That's where there are aspects or characteristics of a specific group, and those are passed down to others. So, again, you can see some exa examples there, um, cultural traditions of food and language and clothing style, things like that. Another form of diversity is an age. And here at Ancilla College, I'm on the campus here at the uh, Poor Handmaids of Jesus Christ Ministry Center, also known as the Center at Donaldson, um, we have of course the college. We also have the Maria Center where people who are retirement age live in the Catherine, Ca the Catherine Casper home which is um, those for those who either have gotten into more advanced years and need a little bit more help um, with some assisted living even a nursing home component there. So again a lot of different age groups. Um, one of the things that you'll notice as you walk, you walk around here uh, on campus is you will see a lot of people in different age, age groups um, and many of those older people are happy to talk to the college students and, and hear what they have to say um, regardless of what the college students age is. Keep in mind that while traditional age for college students is defined as 18 to 22 year olds, um, a lot of people go to college a bit older and I'm sure some of the people in this class are going to college a bit older and personally um, even when I was traditional age as a student, I enjoyed being in the classroom with some of the older students. I found that they often had really interesting perspectives and uh, hopefully we can all learn a lot from each other. Here's some more forms of diversity. Um, there's diversity of religion and even here on campus, while we are sponsored by a Catholic organization, you'll find um, 
people who have different belief systems here. Some are Catholics, of course. Some are Protestants. You will find some atheists here. Uh, here. Um, and while we don't have as many of some certain religions, um, we we do have different folks on campus with different belief systems. As you get into the workplace and those of you who will go on to other colleges will find a lot more diversity at most other colleges. Um, and you should remember that whatever your own orientation or interest level in religion, um, you need to respect people of other faiths. Um, you are not here to proselytize, in other words, convert people to your religion. And um, I've been in classrooms where there were students who were very aggressive and pushy with their religion. And while perhaps I may have sort of had the similar beliefs to them, um, I found myself very uncomfortable with the way that they were pushing their own religion um, and trying to get in the face of other students. Don't be that person. Another form of diversity has to do with sexuality. And a couple things we'll get into under this. First of all, sexual orientation. You're going to have um, people who are heterosexual, that means attracted to the opposite sex. Um, you're going to have homosexual people who are attracted to the same sex. You'll have, sex. You'll have bisexual people who are attracted to uh, both sexes. Asexual means uh, people who are really without sexual feelings or associations. Um, so they're not going to really have strong sexual desires one way or the other. Others would define that as a lack of sexual attraction or just very low interest in sexuality. And then there are folks who would really define themselves as questioning. Um, they may have identified as heterosexual, homosexual, etc. Um, but as they are in a certain part of li their life journey, they may be questioning their own sexuality and may not really be able to define it um, at that time. Um, there's also what's called sexual identity and there's what's called the birth sex, um, which most of us, you know, I'm sure would identify as male or female, but there's also what's called intersex, where the sexual organs that are there don't quite fit the definition either way. There's also gender identity. There we have both transgender and cisgender. Um, again, these are all definitions and terms that you can look up and find out more if you're confused or not really sure what these mean. More forms of diversity we can see here include um, various disabilities, including physical, mental, and learning disabilities. Um, some of these things I should point out um, are not necessarily going to be viewed by everyone as disabilities. Um, and there are, fields of, there are fields of study related to this and, and debates that we can get into. The overall idea that you want to take away from this um, is that different people are going to see the world through different perspectives because of their different abilities and disabilities. And uh, for example, um, if you look at this list, um, you know, there are people who have physical disabilities that don't affect them at all in terms of their ability to do academic work, but they may need accommodations to help get access to that. Um, other people do have learning disabilities or mental disabilities that um, affect the way that they perceive academic things or um, things that are going on around them. Um, I will note here that, again, some of these items listed here are not always viewed as disabilities by everyone. As somebody who has friends who are involved, involved in disability studies, which is a field that you can go into, and I have friends who um, do have autism, and I have friends with many of these other things, um, I think it, it gets dangerous when you start labeling people. And so I'm putting the slide up there to get the general idea across, but with a disclaimer, um, I wouldn't necessarily define all of these things completely as being a disability. Um, and when you're working with somebody or talking with somebody, obviously some things are going to be really obvious. Um, other things might be more subtle or it might take getting to know somebody or other things you just can't put a, put a word on it. But you, you notice that something might be um, a little different than your experience. And... Um, you know, you want to have a balance between caring and, and asking questions that are going to be constructive and, and you know, on the other hand, doing things that are going to be damaging. But have conversations with people. Get, get to know people and, and get their perspectives, um, even on how they would like to be viewed, um, and then respect that. Another form of diversity has to do with economic status. And, again, you're going to meet people at Encilla College from across the economic spectrum. 
we do have many students who, um, like how I was when I was a college student, really can't afford um, much of anything and come from back backgrounds where economically we struggle quite a bit. Um, other students come from backgrounds where um, there is some wealth or, you know, somewhere in between. We need to be able to, again, respect each other's backgrounds, not stereotype based on that, um, and be able to... Um, with all the different forms of diversity we've discussed, um, keep in mind that everyone just wants to be treated with respect and accepted for who they are, even if people don't agree with their beliefs and or lifestyle, and uh, people don't want to be discriminated against just because of their ethnicity, race, gender, sexual orientation, disability, age, religious beliefs, etc. Um, um, and I can come up with all kinds of cliches here, um, but sincerely I say that, you know, we are all people, we are all um, in this world together trying to um, make the world a better place, hopefully. Um, and if you come up against some kind of a discrimination um, as a student um, and you want to talk to somebody about it or pursue um, trying to make it better, um, again, feel free to contact me or uh, contact um, someone that you're comfortable talking to about that. As we gain maturity and become more responsible adults and citizens, we realize that there's a great value to diversity. And when we talk about a college campus, for example, um, everyone brings something different to college campus, a different experience, um, different perspectives that we can share, and we can learn from each other, we can understand each, understand each other better, um, and again, find those commonalities. For me, um, going to a college campus where um, I found a lot more diversity and I was able to get to know lots more different types of people, that was one of the most valuable things in my life, and that really shaped me as a person and, and shaped me into the educator that I am today. Um, and more importantly, it shaped me into the person that I am today. And, and I still have friends that I met during that time that if I hadn't been open to um, diversity and other ways of looking at the world, I wouldn't have those friends. As we get into the workplace, we're going to realize that there are lots of benefits of diversity there as well. Um, diversity can help productivity. Different ways of looking at things can also help with um, creativity and problem solving. Um, as you get into a workplace and a career and, and you start looking around you, you realize that being open, to, being open to diversity will help you attract and retain talent that you might not otherwise have gotten. Um, and again, that can help you reach out to others uh, and, and help you reach out to even more customers than you might have before if that's something you're trying to do. Um, so overall, value of diversity in the workplace is very high or at least it should. Most of us probably know this, but we want to avoid stereotypes. And there's information here about what stereotypes are. They're generally um, exaggerated, oversimplified, often very offensive ways of describing um, or uh, characterizing a group. Um, oftentimes, people who use a lot of stereotypes tend themselves um, to, come, to come from a lack of education. Um, oftentimes, they're relying on family and friends' views of things. Um, to help inform them, and unfortunately, many of these things are not very accurate. Um, oftentimes, negative stereotypes come from bad experiences with people, though, again, often it just comes from growing up with certain people around you who spread and share those stereotypes, whether anyone has actually had very many experiences to support that view or not. Um, and sometimes stereotypes, um, you know, simply stay in that state, but, but sometimes stereotypes do lead to hate, um, and of course that's very problematic. For many of us, myself included, college is where we're first really exposed to diversity on, on a broader scale, um, and that can be very challenging, and you know, for me there were things that I had to overcome with that as well, um, and it's okay to admit that you're facing a challenge. challenge but again, you want to keep an open mind to that, um, especially if you grew up in an environment where there wasn't a lot of diversity. On a college campus, a major way to connect with others, um, and that includes different types of relationships, but also um, connecting with others and getting more uh, diversity in your life and, and getting to know other people from other backgrounds and perspectives, um, is through involving yourself in various activities. Um, um, so keep an eye out for what we've got going on, um, show up to bowling nights or um, 
various mixers and activities that we've got going on. Um, some of us end up getting jobs on campus, like work study program. Um, that's a good way to meet other students and kind of be exposed to people who um, you might want to get to know. And we have some volunteer service projects um, that you can sign up for as well. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, again, feel free to contact me. All right, here's a quick review. First of all, of course, be open to meeting new students and creating new relationships. Diversity helps you prepare for the world of working um, and just makes you a better overall person. Be sure to get involved. Um, be aware of different stereotypes that you might have um, and try to eliminate those. And learn to accept others regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, religious beliefs, and so on. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day.